Hello people, I want to come on here and give you guys a video today. Raw, unedited, uncut, stream of consciousness, straight off the top of the dome. Um, <clears throat> first of all, I want to say that things on planet Earth here are intensifying. I see a, a real split, a real divergence that's continuing to happen between um, people who are trying to get themselves right with God and people who are embracing the father of lies and choosing to live in moral degeneracy and sin. And yeah, for those of us who have eyes to see, if our eyes are open and if we're really looking at the current state of the world with, with eyes that can see, um, to me, I would say it's very clear that the world is split. That's how I'm experiencing it. The world is split. The world is split between people who are God-fearing, traditional, um, obedient, not obedience in like the way that we would call, um, like, a a muggle or a sheep, you know, like where they're just being obedient to everything their government says. That's not the obedience I'm talking about. I'm talking about obedient to God, to God's commands, obedient to Christ. So we have people who are living on that path, the path of obedience, who are seeking God's will in their life, who are um, seeking to continue to bring forth good fruit and virtuous fruit of living in God's way. And then we have other people who are um, apparently, it seems to me, going just deeper and deeper and deeper into degeneracy, sin, filth, wickedness, witchcraft, all, all kinds of um, just reprobated satanic forms of living. Since I've myself gotten out of the new age, out of that degenerate um, left-handed path of following Satan, and I've switched to following Christ, I've realized that people who are following the father of lies, people who are following the enemy, which is, I would say, more or less like a great majority of humans, whether they realize it or not, um, at least it's fair to say this, I believe, a great majority of humans are living under a strong delusion. They're under a strong deception, whether that's, you know, Islam or Catholicism or, um, you know, New Age occultic beliefs, uh, atheism, this or that, like people are under, people are under really strong, like powerful delusions. Um, they're following the ways of the world. They're following the father of lies, the prince of darkness. And the people who are following Christ and seeking to live in a virtuous way, walking with Christ and seeking to do his will in their life, those people are a minority for sure. Um, yeah, just speaking planetary wide, like the true followers, the true believers of Christ and his teachings are uh, effectively a persecuted minority. And what I'm personally seeing is as the world, the world to me appears to be, this is just one man's perspective, you know, maybe you're having a different perspective and that's, that's also valid. But the perspective I'm having, and this is my channel, my vlog, so I'm going to talk about what I'm seeing. Uh, thanks for tuning in. You can click like and subscribe if you're still listening. But um, what I'm seeing is that the wickedness, the wickedness of people who are living in moral degeneracy and sin and filth, to me, it appears to be intensifying. That's the perspective that I'm having. I almost feel as if God has sent us like warnings on our planet. I feel like the pandemic in a way was kind of like a strong warning from God of like, y'all better get yourselves right. Or you're about to lose like everything that, um, is good and true and holy, you know, you're about to lose it all, you know, so you better straighten yourselves out. That's how, that's what I feel like the spiritual opportunity coming out of the pandemic was, was for people to, to wake up and to repent and to cleanse themselves and to heal and to recognize that, to recognize the wickedness of their ways. This is in a roundabout way, like what happened to me, you know, I was living in moral degeneracy and sin and filth and promiscuity and drug use and all of this stuff. Um, when the pandemic came through and, you know, one of the fruits of how that particular period of time changed my life was that it, it basically forced me to realize that the path that I was on was not producing any good fruit. It was producing bad fruit. It was producing heartache. It was producing hardship. It was producing, um, you know, 
all kinds of stuff that I needed to like be recovering from, you know, like crisis after crisis or heartbreak after heartbreak. Um, things were not adding up. If I was such a good person and I was on this such a good, like virtuous path, like I, like I probably thought that I was while I was living in that delusion, then why was I getting such, you know, dishonorable outcomes in my life? And this is unfortunately like a revelation that everyone has to have on their own. And um, what I'm seeing is that a lot of people are missing, have missed the memo, you know, a lot of people have just tried to go back to their old ways as quickly as possible since the pandemic came and intervened upon us. It's almost as if people have doubled down. Is anyone else feeling that? You know what I'm saying? Like, it's almost as if people like after everything went on pause for like a year or something, now that like the gears of the machine are like going again, it's almost like everyone's like even more thirsty, even more depraved, even more willing to like push things to like their furthest like extremes. And Jesus teaches us just to literally like walk away from it all. I think just like don't, don't contaminate yourself with this world. And, um, you know, like don't debase yourself. Don't, don't stoop down to the, the ways of the world. A good example is like, take like Tinder, for example, right? Like I would say it's a very ungodly thing to do to like subscribe to Tinder and to like upload your image, upload your likeness. Like if you're a child of God, like why would you just like hand your very essence over to this like screen so that all of these like reprobated, like lost, let's just call it what it is, right? Just, just so all of these like depraved and lost people can just sit there like going through this ritual of like rejecting you. And that's what you'd be doing as a man. I mean, I don't mean to make this a video about online dating or anything, but just to close this tangent, like the statistics show that like, at least for men, like most men are like rejected by like 95% of women on these apps, right? So this is like a good example of like how to not allow the world to contaminate you and to debase you and to degrade you. Um, cause that's what the world does. The world wants to just like take you, your very soul, your very essence, everything that is good, holy, perfect, beautiful, pure, true about you and just like contaminate it and just stir it up in this pot with all of this filth and degeneracy and decay and propaganda and lawlessness and demonic hellish influence. And then like package it all up and sell it back to you as like something that you're supposed to be like thrilled about. And, um, yeah, my message today, and I'm going to keep this one kind of brief. I'm going to keep this one under uh, 14 minutes, let's say. My message today or what is alive in me today is that, you know, in this divergence, in this way in which the world is like, you know, Christ says, I've come to divide the world. You know, Christ is like, Christ is going to judge the world. He's going to judge. He's, he's going to draw a line between like the wicked and the righteous and so whether we realize it or not, like we're already choosing which side of that line we are going to be on based on the choices we're making, based on how we're living our life. Um, and this might seem like kind of a heavy message or something or kind of an intense message. And I could see how people would get kind of prickly and be like, oh, you know, like I'm just trying to have fun or like get all defensive and defend their sin, defend their degeneracy, just defend their filth, try to make excuses for unrighteous behavior. And so, you know, since I know that people are weak in their psyches, people can't handle like strong messages or like intense messages because they're, they're too afraid of being convicted by them. So everything has to be like softened up nowadays. And I feel that I feel the burden of that even right now, as I'm making this video of like, Oh man, I better like pull out of this, like, intense like dialogue that I'm on and end it like on a positive note so people can actually like handle it or they won't click off the video. And um, some of y'all are real ones actually who are like lay picking up what I'm laying down here. But you know, it's just to say that like, a, there's a lot of people that like, because of how weak humanity has become people like they don't want to be um, convicted they, they don't want to, they don't want to have to deal with like a strong message that might convict them that they need to repent and change their ways. And this has always been, I think the challenge that, um, basically 
people with a Christian message have always been dealing with from like, you know, John the Baptist all the way till now, there's always been this um, friction between like someone speaking truth and the capacity for what the world is like able to absorb or receive or listen to. Um, so yeah, I just want to say that like, when, when, when we're thinking about this like divergence between righteousness and wickedness, we have to really think about like, what really is the cost of being righteous? You know, what really am I giving up to like live in a way that honors God? And I think if you take a step back and just examine this world for what it is, all of the depravity and wickedness of the world is, it's, it's really nothing to be giving up. You know, if you're a man and you're addicted to watching certain videos on the internet, for example, like, what is that? What is that compared to the glory of God? You know, like, why would giving up something like that be? Why would giving up something like that or reforming, repenting, changing your ways, seeking to become pure and righteous? Like, what is the loss in that? You know, why? Why is there a need to defend moral degeneracy to defend filth and sin? You know, like, why? Why are we as a species so? consumed by our own flesh and by our own degenerate spirits that we can't like just sit for like one minute and be like, maybe I am living in a way that dishonors God, you know, like, Hmm. Or like, maybe I should, you know, repent. Maybe I should go on like a SR streak. Maybe I should like stop sleeping around. Maybe I should quit, you know, picking up that tobacco or whatever the the habit or the drug or the addiction is like uh and this is what god this is the path that god wants us on the path of repentance where we can start to come into contact with our need the the real need that we have for righteousness like as humans christ is righteousness and christ is he's our water he's like our very water he's like our he's our he is life he is our life source. So like, let's use an analogy. Like if you were stranded in the desert and you had no supplies with you, you would be in a very bad situation because you're not connected to any source of life. Eventually you're going to dehydrate. You're going to die due to, due to exposure. This is the spiritual state that most humans are in, by the way. They're lost. They're in a desert. They need help. They need salvation. They need someone who is the source of life to come to them and to effectively rescue them. This is why Christ, we call Christ our savior. We need to be saved out of this impoverished and depraved situation that we're in as people from a spiritual perspective. And yet because of our haughtiness and arrogance and pridefulness, because of all the ways in which we've been deceived, we're not even able to realize the predicament that we're in. We're not even able to fully appreciate the severity of our situation and because of this, we actually reject the cornerstone. We reject the Savior. We reject the Messiah. We reject the one thing that could pull us up out of our sin, of our predicament, of our status as individuals who are stranded and in need of salvation. So I'm going to end it there to keep it under 14 minutes like I said I would. Walk the virtuous path. Live in righteousness. God bless you.